Hi class, today we're going to learn how to solve for voltage, current, and resistance in a combination circuit, mainly circuit type 1 that you guys see in front of you. Before we go ahead and solve for a bunch of things within this circuit, we have to go over a new rule, and that rule is called Kirchhoff's Loop Rule. And that rule basically says that as current leaves a battery and it goes around and chooses a path, let's say this path that goes through A, the voltage drops of all the resistors in that path must add up to the total voltage, which in this case is 100 volts. Now if you look, there's only resistor A in this path, which means that resistor A has a voltage drop of 100 volts. But if we were to follow some current that went this way and went through B and C and then went back to the battery, there are now two resistors that are going to share the 100 volts. Basically, the voltage drop of B plus the voltage drop of C is going to add up to 100 volts. And that works everywhere. That works in series circuits, that works in parallel circuits, that's going to work in every one of our combination circuits. And it's super, super important that you understand that and you remember that. You may want to rewind this video and go play that back again because it's an extremely important concept for solving combination circuits. Okay, going ahead and solving for all these things, I'm going to show you my steps on how to do it. There are multiple other ways to do it. You might even find out your own patterns, uh, and that's great, but I'm going to show you my way of how I solve this type 1 circuit. The first thing I do for every single circuit is I solve for the total resistance. So just like last week's homework, we can go ahead and simplify resistors B and C down to, now since they are in series with each other, uh, we can add up to find their resistance together. And A is also by itself there in its own path, so that still has 20 ohms. And now we've reduced this circuit down to two resistors with B and C combining to 5 ohms. And now we can solve for our total resistance by doing 1 over 20 plus 1 over 5 to the negative first power. And that should get us 4 ohms. And that's probably what you're going to do for all of your circuits is you're going to solve for the total resistance first. The next thing I like to do is solve for the total current because I'm almost always giving you the total voltage. So to solve for the total current I can do the total voltage over the total resistance that we just found and we can do 100 over 4 and we can get 25 amps which is a lot but that's fine 25 amps in this circuit coming right out of the battery. Now at this point, once you get those two, uh, or possibly even before this, you should be looking for rules, things you know about circuits. So the first thing I did uh, was I talked about Kirchhoff's loop rule, and we should know that since A isn't the only path this way, that loop, that A is going to get all 100 volts. So I can go ahead and say that A gets 100 volts. The other thing I might want to realize is that I see B and C are in series with each other, which means they're going to share voltage. We don't know how much. It's not necessarily going to be 50-50. Um, but they're going to get the same amount of current. So however many amps goes through B also goes through C. Uh, what we do now know is that A gets 100 volts. So I'll write that right there. And now we know two things about A. So once we know two things about A, we can solve for the total current going through A. And we can do IA is VA over RA. And we can do 100 divided by 2. And that's going to get me, sorry. hundred divided by 20. And that should get me 5 amps. So I can go ahead and put that here. Now at this point you may want to pause the video and just think for a second. Because there's something else we can get pretty quickly. So go ahead and think about it for a second, and then go ahead and hit play and, and uh, continue with the video. Uh, what I noticed right away is that I actually can get the current of B and C without much work here at all. I do know that I get a total current of 25 amps. And if 25 amps comes out of the battery, and 5 amps goes to A, so that would mean right here, this gets 5 amps. 
That means if we have 25 amps coming out of the battery and 5 amps go here, that must mean the remaining 20 amps must go to B and C. So there's not even really a formula for that. You should just know that as a concept. So the remaining amps that I'll put right here go to B and C. So that means B gets 20 amps and C also gets 20 amps. And once you know that, now you know two things about each resistor. You can use Ohm's law to solve for the um, voltage at B. So I can do voltage of B is going to be the current, 20, times the resistance, which is 4, which is 80 volts. And I can do the B equals I times R. So I can do 20 amps times 1 ohm. And I get 20 volts. And then I should be able to look at the problem at the end and say, all right, uh, A gets 100 volts because that's its path. And now if I took the other path to go through B and C, those two have to add up to 100 volts to confirm Kirchhoff's loop rule. And if you look, 80 plus a 20 gives you 100 volts. So you can be confident that you're right. Uh, I know there's other ways to do it. Uh, you might be able to figure it on your own. Otherwise, I might just stick with mine. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and let me know. And uh, I'll